Hi, I'm JD, and I moved from Alaska to Portugal after I paid $15,000 to buy this old house that had sat empty for years. And now I'm renovating it on a budget, focusing on traditional and sustainable methods, and welcoming you to follow along in the process. Hi everybody, so today I'll be making a homemade borate wood treatment. It's relatively low toxic to people and pets, and works for active infestations and as a preventative treatment. And the best part is it's permanent. Most insecticide wood treatments you buy at the hardware store only lasts a few years, maybe 10 years max. But this is essentially permanent in an indoor environment. So this is essentially a copy of a commercially available product. So I don't know if there's like trademarks or copyrights or anything. So, so I won't say the name, but I'll link the recipe that I'm using in the description. And in the US and Canada, you can just buy it. I think it's actually a Canadian company, but it's not available here in Europe, so I have to make it. So it's only three ingredients, um, all relatively easy to come by, more so in the US. I did have to order all of it online. These two I got from Loja das Químicas. It's an online chemical store in Portugal. It's borax. In the US, you just get it at the grocery store. Here you can get it at the pharmacy, but just in little packets. So this was a lot easier and cheaper to get it in a bigger container and boric acid. And the third ingredient is propylene glycol. So the boric acid was a little over five euros per kilo and the borax was seven euros per kilo. I had to order this from Spain um, because it seems like it's really easy to get in either very small amounts or really, really big amounts. This five liters will be more than enough for the entire house. It's like 47 euros and then 350 shipping. So like just over 50 euros. The brand I got this from is EQM Solutions, and they also have an Amazon store. But if you order from them directly, it's a lot cheaper than from Amazon. So the actual product uses ethylene glycol. I'm using propylene glycol, partially because it seemed like everywhere was out of stock of ethylene glycol. Um, but this is also a lot safer. This is technical grade, but if you get USP, it's food safe. And it's in a lot of foods and cosmetics. And I think vape juice is just straight propylene glycol but i got this because it's clear as is pure ethylene glycol but but it's probably easiest to get as antifreeze for your car the problem with that is one the neon green color and also what online was saying was that since it has a lot of other stuff in it like like preservatives and antioxidants and stuff um it takes forever to dry so since i'm doing a finish on it and it's the floor and the doors and stuff i don't want the color and i want it to dry fast so that's why I'm not using antifreeze. But for like studs and walls or like up in the roof where you don't care about the color or drying time, then just using antifreeze wouldn't matter. I guess the biggest downside would be that since it's water soluble, if you use it outside, the rain will eventually wash it out. So it's pretty much indoor only unless you have some kind of waterproofer. So now it's time to mix everything up. And sorry if there's a lot of background noise. There's just been like constant weed eating and a couple houses down they've got a cement mixer that's been going for the last few days. So this is the biggest pot I have. I try to find a bigger one but pots here are super expensive. So I'll just do two half batches in this. So it'll be one container of borax which is one kilo which is just over 2.2 pounds. And just to make sure everything's right I have the scale and I'll weigh the to weigh the borax. So slightly over a kilo, so that's actually good. So converted to pounds, that's two pounds, 3.8 ounces, which is just under two and a quarter pounds, which is the amount for the half batch. So now I'll do half of three and a half pounds, which is 1.75, so one pound, 12 ounces. And I'm just using U.S. measurements because that's what the recipe's in, and everything I have is dual measure, so I don't have to do any conversions. Oops. Had a little spillage, but that's why I'm using safe products. So 
So now I'll do half a gallon of propylene glycol, which is 8 ounces. I'll just let this heat up to 260 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't actually know if I need to stir it, but I figured I might as well let it help it along with the mixing. And since I'm using propylene glycol, I can do this inside. But with ethylene glycol, the fumes are toxic, so you have to do it outside. So my understanding is this step is just to boil off any excess water, which would cause the solution to crystallize um, so that you can store it for long term instead of just a couple hours. And it'll keep boiling, but once it gets to 260, then you can just turn it off. I actually wasn't paying close enough attention and so I went over 260 which I think caused it to get really thick and kind of hard to work with. And then once it's done you just let it cool off. I let it cool off overnight but it didn't need that much time so but still a few hours. And then after that, you can just transfer it to a container for long-term storage. Um, it'll be a syrupy consistency, but you can see here mine was really thick, and I think that's because I let it get too hot. And you can store it like this long-term, and then when you need to use it, you just mix equal parts, the solution, with water. And then you can just brush or spray it on like anything else. Once you do add the water, though, you need to use it. Ideally within the first hour or two, but definitely within 24 hours. You can see mine is already turned white from starting to precipitate out. Um, and I think that might also be because of getting too hot in the cooking process. It goes on really smooth and easily. Um, it says it can penetrate up to six inches. These boards are about an inch and a half, but I wasn't sure how much to use, so I figured too much is better than too little since it's an active infestation. But it turns out a little goes a long way, and I definitely used too much. I used just around three cups of concentrate for this room, and I probably would have been better if I did just two. Um, you can see if you use too much, you get this like white powder on the boards when it dries. And in which case, you just wipe it off with a wet cloth. So it's been a couple days since I got it all cleaned up, and I still haven't seen any little dust piles, so I'm assuming that it, everything worked fine. So definitely very happy with the way it turned out. For the next batch, I'll definitely pay more attention to the temperature and use a lot less when I'm applying it. The stuff online said ethylene glycol is better for active infestation because the ethylene glycol itself will also kill everything. But the propylene glycol seemed to work fine. My infestation isn't bad, it's just a few little dust piles here and there. But the glycol is just the carrier to bring the borates into the wood, so once it's in the wood it doesn't really matter. 
And the ethylene glycol does eventually break down, I think, into just like ethanol and water. And you can use water instead of the glycol um, for new wood as just a preventative surface treatment. I also forgot to mention that in addition to being a permanent protection against bugs that eat wood, it's also a fungicide, so it also prevents like mold and rot and that stuff. Why this isn't like just the standard wood treatment, I have no idea, except capitalism. And like I said, I'll put the links to the recipes that I used down in the description. There's two recipes, one links from the other, um, but I'll put them both separate. I used the one that used more of the borax and boric acid because that was the same amount that I saw in some other places. And again, seems better to use too much than too little. So that's the recipe I used, but the other one also has a lot of other useful information. And there's also a lot of other videos on YouTube that you can watch if, if you're interested and want some more information. But I definitely wish I knew about this in Nicaragua because the termites there are insane and would have eaten this house in months. But that's the video. Thanks for watching and, and hopefully this was useful or at least educational. So thanks again for watching and see y'all next time. Ciao.